Okay, so here we're looking at a um, two bedroom apartment in four ways. What I've quickly done using a very cool tool called Pocketlet, I've been able to determine what the average price for a two bedroom apartment in four ways is. So this tool just scrapes a whole bunch of different websites and gives you an average. And having lived in four ways for a few years, I, I do know that this is quite realistic. So you're looking at about 8,100, which is your average rent, times that by 12 to get an annual rental figure. I then also worked out what your sort of average market price is for two bedroom, which is a million rand. So you divide this number by one million and times that by 100. Um, that gives you a gross yield, <laughs> gross yield of 9.72%. Anything under 15% is a likelihood of a negative cash flow which is very common. You're going to see that in your suburban areas because the purchase price increases greater than the rent does. So therefore there's, you know, it's, it's overpriced um, if you're looking at a rental deal. Let's have a look at the pictures. Um, so it's a beautiful house. You can see that it's uh, probably a young, you know, pretty fresh designy type couple that lives here. I dig the guitars. If they're part of the sale, that'll go a long way for me. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, this is a great property if you want to live here. If you want to buy it as an investment and rent it out, I don't think it's going to be a good deal. And that's the way you got to look at it. Is it an investment that I want to go and live in? Then the emotional impact adds to your decision making. But if you're looking at a purely financial decision, this deal probably won't make positive cash flow from day one. It might appreciate in capital and we'll look at how the numbers look for that. But that's again speculation. Um, but yeah, property looks great. Uh, there's a pool, it's in a security estate, so there's definitely going to be a levy associated to it. So I've got the My Property app open here. Let's run the numbers. So they're asking uh, 1075. Um, sorry, 1075. So a million and 75,000. Based on my experience and my knowledge of the area, if you can get a 5% discount, that's, that's maybe achievable. More than that, unless the owner's really, really motivated, is unlikely. So that's why I've gone in with an offer of about 1 million and 20,000 because I think that would be achievable. And then I'm using here the uh, 8,150, the rent that I got from Pocketlet as an estimate. Next, I can go to the buying costs. Uh, here on Uber, it's telling me that um, 60,000 will be my buying costs. So I'm gonna put that in there. There won't be any renovation costs or any other costs. So I can skip through to the finance costs. Let's assume I can get a 90% loan at 9%. I would recommend that you don't use 7%, even though that's what Prime is today, just because I think as uh, inflation increases and our, as our economy recovers, that repo rate is going to go up. And if your deal only works at 7%, you're going to be uh, rudely awoken when it goes up. Let's have a look here at the levies. Uh, levies of 1,800. Well, that's pretty common. Rates and taxes, probably 650. That's what I'm paying for my unit there. Insurance will be included in the levies. Voids, I mean, you could get lucky. You could have a tenant that stays there for two, three years and they probably won't default. Um, I would still put a, a small provision, maybe 2%. Management, you, know, you could probably get away with 8% as a management fee and maintenance, maybe 5%. Uh, depending if you're gonna uh, pay for the water and electricity or charge that back onto your tenant, you might put another number here for water and electricity, but let's just assume that that's being paid by the tenant. So yeah, this property's gonna lose almost 4,000 per month. You know, so the return won't be good, you're losing money, but that's that's the reality of investing in an area like that. What we can do is we can do some projections. If we say that inflation is the rate at which expenses are increasing and maybe the rent is going up by about 8%, which is aggressive, but it might happen in that area and maybe a capital appreciation of 7%. Uh, we can cal calculate and uh, what the app is gonna do now is it's gonna do a projection. So what you can see here is year one, two all the way through to about year eight it's going to be a negative cash flow by year nine it sort of breaks even and becomes positive and then slowly but surely your cat your cash flow increases you know so yeah you, you essentially need to hold this property for about nine years in order for the rental to have kept or increased to a point where it can cover the expenses uh, potentially from an equity gains perspective you know the red bar here is telling you how the how the, the property is being paid off the bond. The green, um, I've just kept it at 1075 just because infl um, appreciation is always something that you're speculating at best. So yes, it might go up, but you just want to know how much equity you're getting in the property. So all in all, what I can say, um, not a bad deal if you're looking to live there and it's an emotional asset, but from a purely uh, cash flow perspective, I would say uh, this is not an ideal investment.